Hi, um, this is my pleasure to introduce the team from uh, St. Francis, um, and we're going to discuss one of the um, uh, really important studies that we accepted at Jack. I'm Dr. Akriti Gupta. I'm an executive associated editor at Jack, and also an interventional cardiologist at Cedar Sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles. <clears throat> we have uh, Dr. Omar Khalik, who's the director of cardiovascular imaging at St. Francis. Dr. Ziad Ali, who's the director of uh, Dematis Institute for Clinical Research at St. Francis in uh, New York. And we have Dr. Koshiro Sakai, who's an interventional fellow, and Dr. Dusip Shin, who's also a cardiologist at St. Francis in, Los, uh, in New York. Sorry. Uh, so we're going to discuss the manuscript that's titled Clinical Impact and Diagnostic Performance of Photon Counting Detector CT in Coronary Artery Disease. Uh, this is obviously a very important and topical theme as a lot of our institutions are trying to get the latest and uh, most shiny uh, toys in town as far as goes, as goes to clinical imaging. But at St. Francis, they seem to have a very large uh, single center experience that we were very happy to work with them uh, to, to publish this in Jack for our readership. So <clears throat> I'll start with Dr. Omar Khalik. Um, can you educate our readership about what is photon counting CT and how is it revolutionizing CT imaging? So uh, the um, photon counting technology, uh, people refer to as a better CT, but it's actually a, a totally new technology. And this is something that's been talked about since before I started my career. So when you look on the left, you see the energy integrated detector, which is the CT that everybody has and, and everybody is used to. So you see some lines in between the bar, which is the detector. So there are separations uh, and you see that there's a, there are some detectors at the end of that. Uh, and what happens there is there's a two-step conversion. And in imaging, anytime there's more steps, that means you lose some of the uh, image, imaging data and you also get increased image noise. Uh, and also the detectors are, are uh, obligatorily larger because of the septations. Now on the right, we have the photon detector CT, and uh, you see that there are no septations in the detectors. That allows them to be smaller, more integrative, uh, and to have a single step of direct energy conversion into signal. So you, you maintain much more of the imaging data, you reduce imaging noise, uh, and it also gives you um, other features which we're not going to uh, focus that much on today. Um, but the ability to look at things at different energy levels. So it's a, a, a pure energy signal. The en energy integrating, which is the traditional scanner, is an average of energies. But now we can separate out each individual energy, and that gives us a much clearer image. Uh, and in addition, we can actually enhance or remove iodine signals um, because that's inherent in the data. So this is, a, this is very exciting and a true leap in the CT technology, <coughs> which everyone has been waiting for. That's great. Um, I um, I agree. And in fact, we've been trying to get um, photon counting CT at our institution, but obviously it is very expensive. And I think what what the data from your study will really help uh, do for the community is really contextualize how uh, how great it can be as far as the quality of the imaging is and may at some point justify its cost. Um, and here I'm seeing some images uh, that, that that are showing the resolution. Would you like to describe that? Yeah, so, um, you know, I, I said a bunch of technical stuff, but uh, in practicality, what this means is that you get an improved spatial resolution, even at the standard resolution, but because of the smaller detectors, we can also use ultra high resolution imaging, which is at 0 0.2 millimeters. So about half to one third the thickness that we're used to from traditional scanners. We get reduced noise, so you see the image is extremely clear and sharp, uh, and decreased blooming artifacts, which has been an Achilles heel of CT. So you can see that the uh, calcium looks very, very crisp and sharp, and there's no question as to what the lumen looks like. That's great. So with that background, um, we'd love to hear about what are the main findings of your study. So I see there are some slides. Uh, would love to hear, um, you know, the main headlines of the study. Right. Uh, thank you for having us. Uh, I'll be presenting briefly about what we found from the study. My name is Tusab Shin from St. Francis Hospital. Um, so um, in this study, um, as the 
St. Francis is one of the uh, the first centers in the U.S. Uh, which introduced this new CT technology uh, to clinical practice uh, for coronary CT angiography. So in this study, we aim to assess the clinical impact and diagnostic performance of photon counting CT compared with the conventional uh, CT. Uh, this was the uh, retrospective single center study. Uh, we uh, pulled the data from 2022 when only conventional EID CT scanner was available. Uh, and since the introduction of uh, photon counting CT in January 2023, majority of the study from 2023 was done uh, with the photon counting <coughs> CT. Uh, we included all consecutive patients who underwent clinically indicated uh, coronary CT angiography. Um, and then the first part uh, of the study was to uh, assess the clinical impact of photon counting CT. Uh, so we assessed the rates of uh, invasive coronary angiogram referral and subsequent revascularization after a coronary CT angiogram. So we found uh, 7,833 patients in total, with uh, about 4,000 patients underwent conventional EID CT scanner, mostly in 2022, and 3,876 patients uh, under, undergoing photon counting CT, mostly uh, all of them in 2023. So this was the main finding of our uh, first part of our study. Um, patients who underwent uh, photon counting detector CT uh, were less uh, referred to invasive coronary angiography. Uh, but once they are referred, uh, the uh, patient who underwent photon counting CT were more uh, likely to undergo revascularization compared with those who underwent uh, energy integrating detector CT, thereby we were able to uh, show that the unnecessary invasive coronary angiogram, which was defined as invasive angiogram without revascularization, the rate of unnecessary ICA was lower in photon counting uh, group compared to the conventional CT group. The second part of the study was to investigate the diagnostic performance of CT angiogram. Uh, so included all unstented uh, vessels uh, with at least minimal stenosis in patients who were referred to invasive coronary angiogram after CT scan. Um, and then we compare uh, severe stenosis from the CT uh, with uh, invasive coronary angiogram, and we define obstructive CAD as diameter stenosis more than 50% on QCA. So um, we've, we found uh, this is our study flow, and uh, we found that uh, uh, the patient who underwent uh, the vessels with a photon counting detector CT were more likely to be uh, graded as a severe, uh, a moderate stenosis than severe uh, compared with the energy integrity detector CT scanner. And also the rate of indeterminate cases were lower with the photon counting detector CT. So this is our second part of main finding. Uh, both CT scanners showed excellent sensitivity and negative predictive value for diagnosing obstructive CAD using QCA as a standard reference. Uh, but we found that uh, photon counting CT demonstrated superior diagnostic accuracy, specificity, and uh, positive predictive value compared with the conventional uh, EID CT scanners. And then this was, the, the results were consistent after adjusting for potential confounders so in summary, uh, the present study reports the, uh, the only experience and clinical impact of photon counting CT in the largest or common population to date. Uh, fewer patients were referred to invasive coronary angiogram following photon counting CT, but those referred were more likely to undergo revascularization compared with the conventional EID CT. Photon counting CT demonstrated excellent diagnostic performance for detecting obstructive CAD with very high specificity and positive predictive value. So we think that these results suggest the new CT uh, technology may enhance the clinical care of patients with suspect suspected CAD. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think that was a very nice comprehensive summary of the study. And to summarize, um, I think this is a really impressive 
um, e even though it's a single center experience, but I think that was what was so impressive that despite being a single center experience, we have massive numbers. We're talking about a more than 7,000 patient study with almost 4,000 patients receiving photon counting CT. Um, and that really, and from um, obviously investigators here who are uh, living and breathing photon counting CT every day for more than a year, I think I think this experience can be very useful uh, for for the readership. Um, so some things that you know were uh, that that jumped out at me when I was handling this paper. One was uh, the fact that you know in patients who receive photon counting CT, we also noted that they receive higher um, amount of contrast and higher degree of radiation. Um, and and some might argue, is it is it the in better technology or that we are in fact just using more contrast and radiation and if we did that on the conventional ct could we get better images there as well so i i just wanted to understand how you would uh defend that argument so maybe i can start there akriti because i think uh you know a picture is worth a thousand words and one of the things that we didn't do in our original submission was include a picture and so mm -hmm. what we did in the revision is include actually a patient who had an EID CT scan and then subsequently had a photon counting scan. And we did a co-registered image of before and after. And clearly you can mm -hmm. identify that this is not a contrast related issue at all. Now, the second thing, which is regard to the radiation, we followed the manufacturer's recommendation. Obviously, this is a new technology. They asked us to stay at 140 kV for our tube voltage. And I'll let Omar explain the difference about um, using something called spectral, which allows us to look at different tube voltages within that spectrum. Uh, we haven't at this stage at St. Francis started to experiment with other tube voltages. We may do that in the future. But our initial experience, as you quite astutely described, is really to look at the impact of this new technology. And to me, as a practicing clinician, it's very simple. As a reading cardiologist or radiologist, you can simply see better. So if you see better, you're more confident in making a call and not having something as indeterminate and actually calling something as severe as when you do. And that translates when they come into the cath lab for us. And so if there's less indeterminate and less ambiguity because of the improved resolution, it's easier for us to do our jobs. So I, I wanna give a couple of additional points uh, on top of what Ziad said. I think that if you look at these um, numbers, so the contrast total volume was uh, a couple of cc's higher for the photon counting CT. Um, and, and that's because of the technology, it's a step and shoot acquisition versus a volume scan. Volume scans, all, you can always use less contrast because you're acquiring in one heartbeat. However, if you look in older studies between the two, the, the difference should be about 25 to 50%, not 2%. So here we're actually very similar and we're still getting better diagnostic images. And in addition, what determines the opacity is the contrast flow rate, which is actually lower for the photon counting CT in our data set. So I would say we're getting better images with, with actually less contrast flow. And, and then in the radiate from the radiation standpoint, um, sometimes with a higher energy, you can actually get more uh, artifacts. And we found fewer artifacts uh, in our data set. And uh, of course, in the early experience, you want to go by the manufacturer's recommendations because you're, you're, the key is for um, improved image quality. Now in the, the second and third years, we're gonna be focusing more on that aspect. Um, but I think these numbers, um, rather than uh, needing defense, actually support um, our hypothesis and conclusions from this study. That, that makes a lot of sense. Um, the other thing I would point out is, obviously when we talk about diagnostic accuracy, sensitivity, specificity, et cetera, um, ideally, we want to see a, a prospective study and, and you know, um, obviously the ideal setting is randomized, which obviously this is not. So it's a retrospective single center study. Um, and, 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 you know, be, what I liked about it is that this was happening in the context of real life clinical care. So patients who were getting CT and had 
a need to go to the lab or going to the lab and then we're seeing but 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 the point is we're not seeing we didn't do ct on everybody and systematically and geography on everybody and then go and tell what is the diagnostic accuracy so that is something to think about but i think one great um way in which you manage the study design that sort of addresses that uh not fully but a little bit is that you have a historical control, so uh, which is only one year away, because some people can say, okay, if you take historical controls from a decade ago, then practice has changed. But here we're talking about one year of mostly everybody getting conventional CT, and then next year everybody getting uh, photon counting CT. And I think I think that was a very ingenious study design. Um, and th there are limitations, but overall, I think we get a very good idea about the promise of this technology and uh, where we can go from here. I think this would be the future, but but a question for you, Ziad, is as an interventional cardiologist, <clears throat> do you envision a world, um, I don't know, a few years away or decades away where um, people will go to the lab only when they need an intervention and we are just not going to be diagnos doing diagnostic angiograms anymore? I genuinely do. I think we're moving rapidly in that direction. And, you know, the first step of that, of course, was trying to incorporate FFRCT. Uh, and then the study subsequently, like Ripcord, showed that might not be the case. But I think the bottom line is, what are we trying to achieve with coronary angiography? That is a resolution that helps us make a clinical decision. So if you have the integration of both high resolution and the ability to uh, even by surrogate, determine ischemia, you have all of the answers you want to know. You've got anatomy and you have physiology. But what makes that better than a SPECT or a PET is we not only get to determine whether we want to take the patient to the lab, but our referring cardiologist gets to determine whether they should increase their PCSK9 or put them on Rapatha or use Inclisiran. There's so much more that can be garnered from this. So I would say in the next several years that specifically photon counting CT and even the iterations of photon counting CT are going to be, become the first line for the um, early invasive non-invasive assessment of coronary artery disease. Perfect, thank you. And on that note, um, we congratulate uh, the St. Francis team for a really uh, educational article. And this is going to be simultaneously published with their oral presentation at TCT in Washington, DC next week. Uh, and look forward to seeing you all there. Thank you, have a great day.